Good evening. Good evening. I pray that all is well with you on this Monday evening, uh, the second night of our the second night of our study. Uh, or I should say this the first night of our study, the second night, uh, the second lesson in our study, the first night of our study. We started this on Sabbath morning. Uh, at the 11 o'clock hour uh, with lesson number 16. And, and I'm just jumping right in. Y'all have no clue what I'm talking about. And I want to make sure. All right, there we go. Sorry about that. Uh, but we uh, want to continue um, our lesson study. As I said before, we started this on Sunday after, uh, Sunday morning, and we want to uh, just keep this ball rolling, keep this ball rolling. I'm having some challenges, as you can see, because Elder Kelly doesn't know how to share his screen from the, uh, there we go, from this platform. All right, so here we go. So what I wanted to show you, what I want to show you rather is where you can find our, uh, where you can find our uh, lesson studies online. Uh, if you can see, this is the Berean website. You can just go to www.bereansdahouston.org, click on sharing God's love lesson study and it will take you to a tab that has a PDF of this lesson study. So God bless you for studying with us. Uh, we had a lot of people come up to me on Sabbath saying that, man, this is so awesome. Thank you for doing this uh, to really just refresh us on some of the fundamental beliefs, some of the basic uh, tenets, some of the basic principles of our faith. And so on last Sabbath, we talked about... Um, where is sin? Where did it come from? And how can we be saved from it? And tonight we'll go into lesson number 17 uh, that deals with what happens after a man dies. All right. And so uh, we're going to hit the, get this jump right in. And like I said, I wanted to uh, remind you that we're going to be doing this uh, from March 11th through March 25th. Uh, we're going to cover each of the lessons in this guide. Uh, awesome, powerful, powerful uh, study guide uh, that I feel if you add these scriptures, if you add these, um, these, these Bible answers to your mental Rolodex, it will make you a uh, man, a bad brother or sister when it comes to uh, disseminating the gospel, the word of truth to those, uh, our family, our friends, friends, those who we come in contact with. It's just good to know the uh, this information. And so Mondays at 7 p.m., we're going to start just like we did tonight, right at 7 o'clock on Mondays and Fridays. On Wednesday nights, we'll st start at 7.30 because everybody knows Houston traffic will not allow you to be on time if you are going downtown, traveling downtown to our church. Uh, we know that it gets busy in that time. So we'll start at 7.30 for you, those of you who are getting off of work and want to be in the building with us to study. Uh, we, I mean, we literally ran out of all the books that we have. It's such a blessing. We ordered uh, maybe 100 books, and we're already out of those books. So we're going to start running off copies so that people can have it in their hands to study with us uh, until I know everybody wants to, the, pure, the pretty colorful book. And if we can, we'll get some 
uh, more of those before the uh, end of our series together. But uh, for for the sake of making sure that everybody can study with us when you're with us on Wednesday night, we will definitely have copies available for you if you did have not received your book. And if you have a book that you just hold it on to, that you just, you know, share it with a friend, tell them to join us on uh, Wednesday nights, on Friday and Mondays, and especially on Sabbath mornings to study with us. It has uh, been a joy so far. And here we are, in lesson two. So that's me giving you some kind of introduction to what's going on. And, you know, someone, you know, there's always that one person, Elder Kelly, why are we going over this? This is why we're going over this. Know what you believe, know why you believe it, and know where it's found in scripture. Though This is why we're doing this. People say, Elder Kelly, you know, I've been going to Revelation seminars my whole life. I know all about this. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad you know, but it's important that every person sitting next to you on your pew knows what they believe, why they believe it, and where it can be found in scripture. So tonight we're gonna do just that. We're going to study the Bible together. And I'm uh, I'm charged to study with you for just an hour. So I will uh, try to jam pack all this theology, all this good Bible reading into one uh, hour with you on tonight. And then we'll be back again, like I said, on Wednesday night at 7.30 to cover our lesson number 18. But tonight, uh, let's get into the word. Uh, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer, and then we'll see what the Lord has in store for us this evening. Let us pray. Lord God, we come right now saying thank you, thank you, thank you, because you're so faithful, God. You're so loving, God, that you have created a, a plan for our salvation, God. You've given us uh, tools. You've given us your Bible, your holy word, God, that we can study for ourselves and know the truth that you desire to share with us, God. And not only that, but that we might share it with others, God. We are endeavoring in a lesson study titled, sharing the love of God makes you happier, God. And so we desire to not only be happy, God, but to feel your joy, to feel your presence. Each night we open these words together. God, we pray that someone is enriched. We pray that our tools are sharpened, that someone that comes across our path may come to know your love through us. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So I am... Um, uh, my view of the Zoom room is limited, so I will only see a few of you at a time. But uh, once I open the floor for individuals to participate, uh, I will would that you would uh, pick one of the questions and a scripture that you have in your heart, maybe uh, that goes along, especially the ones that go along with the questions, so that when I call on you or when that you open your mic to to share out, you're right where we need to be and you'll help us to finish uh, our lesson study and uh, and our time. All right, so uh, let's get into it. Tonight, tonight, uh, I, I, I have set up these lessons with a thought that kind of embodies the entire lesson. And so tonight I wanna talk from the thought, rest in peace, rest in peace. And my springboard scripture, just like I told you on Sabbath, uh, if you know me, you know that I'm an expository preacher. I stay in one text the entire time, and I glean from that text uh, spiritual truths that can help to encourage us along our way. And so an expository preacher stays in one text, but a topical preacher will uh, pick a topic and uh, will share every scripture that the Holy Spirit lays on his or her heart uh, to share about that topic. And so tonight our topic is death in the state of the dead. And we will look through the Bible uh, to find answers as to what happens to man when he dies. But our springboard text tonight is found in John chapter 14. And I'm grabbing my, my Bible right here. So I will be flipping and to each of these scriptures with you. Some of them I have on the screen. Some of them I'll flip with you. So bear with me. <clears throat> and uh, John 14, one through three, it says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Uh, 
this scripture, this scripture is uh, re, is one passage of scripture that's very familiar to us. Uh, some of you, if you've been in church all your life, if you've been in church a long time, then you may have attended a few funerals here and there along the way. And this is a passage of scripture that is often shared with individuals at a funeral. And when I read this scripture, when I thought of this lesson, when I read this lesson tonight, uh, the first thing that came to my mind was this passage of scripture reminding us not to let our heart be troubled. Well, to give you context on this text, Jesus was talking to Peter. He had just told Peter, Peter, uh, you know, I know you love me and I know you talk a good game, brother, but you're going to deny me three times before the rooster even crows. You're going to deny me three times. So, uh, you know, he was saying to them, he was telling them that he was no, not going to be with them very long. And Peter uh, said, no, Lord, who, you know, I, I'm your ride or die. There ain't nothing happening to you. I'm going with you all the way. And, and Jesus reminded him that he would uh, prophesy and told him that he would deny him three times. And, and so he, he starts this next pericope, uh, this, this next passage with these words, let not your heart be troubled. The, the, to be apart from Jesus, to be apart from Jesus, if he, when he ascends, when he goes away from you, uh, disciples, when he goes away from you, Peter, uh, to not let your heart be troubled uh, because he is coming back again. And so uh, this, this kind of started to make me think about death. And death is, a, for some, a very unsettling idea, right? The idea that your life will one day be over and that you do not know the day or the hour when your number shall, so to speak, will be called, right? And you don't know, you could be healthy, living your best life and boom, just like that, your 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 light is snuffed out, right? And so you you don't know when the day. And so for a lot of people, that creates a paranoia. You know, uh, 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 oh man, they they are not at peace. And so today, I want to give you some peace about death. I want to give you some comfort about death. And so, uh, uh, like I do my sermons, I set it up with some big questions. And I, I, after studying this lesson. These are three big questions that came to my mind, all right? The first one is, if we go straight to heaven at death, all right, that is a very popular belief about death. When you die, they use that scripture to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So, so a lot of people, there's a, there is a misnomer. There is a belief that if we, if we, when we die, we go straight to heaven. So the big question that I had about this is if we go straight to heaven at death, why would Christ promise to return? Who is he coming back for? If everybody is, you know, if everybody dies and goes up to heaven, then what, what you know, just save yourself the trip, Jesus, we on our way, right? But, but so that's a big question I have. Uh, another one was, uh, what does the Bible say about death? And, and this lesson does a great job of showing us several scriptures that point to what happens to us when we die. And again, if you do not have this lesson study, you can go to our website, www.bereansdahouston.org. Click on the link, Sharing God's Love Study Guide or st Lesson Study, and you will be able to see this PDF right there on the screen, all right? So, um, yeah, so that's, that's, my, that's my second question. My third question is, how can we comfort those who mourn the loss of a loved one, right? This is an opportunity for a lot of us as Christians. This is an opportunity for us to share God's love with others because it is a very emotional time, a very vulnerable time for our friends and family and our loved ones, our neighbors, uh, where they are looking for some comfort. They're looking for something more than it's going to be all right. Give me something I can hold on to, Elder Kelly. And tonight we want to do that in our time together. And so I'm going to be keeping tabs on my time because I do, I do talk a lot and there's a lot to talk about. So let's get into it. So uh, again, if uh, these are my three big questions, then what is my sermon in a sentence? What is my message in a sentence? Tonight, all I want you to know is that if we're going to be disciple makers, if we're going to be sharing the love of God, if we're going to be happier uh, living this life to the best of our ability uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit, if we're going to do all that, then we must know the truth about death so that we can comfort those who mourn with hope in the good news of Jesus Christ. 
So what am I using to comfort the individuals that I come in contact with who are mourning the loss of a loved one? I'm giving them the good news of Jesus Christ. And so we'll make it practical tonight and we'll make it able for you to share and to uh, remember uh, with your family and friends, all right? So uh, I read this scripture on the onset at the beginning of our lesson, and I'll read it again here for you, because again, this is my springboard text. This is going to take us into a deeper conversation about what happens when man dies, all right? So let not your heart be troubled. I have it bolded and underscored because these are the words of Jesus reminding us to be at peace. Do not worry about the, the next life because he's already got a plan for it. He's already got it taken uh, care of. Don't worry about your death. Just know, just live your life for me and your dying will be easy, amen? And so it continues on. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, all right, and, and receive you to myself. And this is the good news, saints. This is the good news, believers of God. This is the good news, is that he, if he left us, you best believe he's coming back for us. Uh, you, you know, uh, they said you can, and you can take that to the bank, right? That, that's a, that's a, that's a, a, a idiom that means that you can count on it because his words are sure. He is a faithful God and he does not lie. He cannot break a promise. And he said, if I go to prepare a place for you, uh, you best believe I'm coming back again for you. All right. So that where you, that where I am, you may be also. And so for me, when I think about the love of God, uh, is nothing that that to me is one of those things, man. That that's just one of those things that that soothes my spirit, right? That puts me at peace. Is that the God of the universe wants my company? Did you did you see it? Okay, I might be the only one. But that where I am, this is Jesus talking. There you may be also. He loves us. He wants a relationship want with us and he wants us to be saved eternally. All right, let's keep it going. So at the coming of Christ, remember, this is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. Uh, we're talking about Christ. Uh, we're talking about death. And for me, when I think about death, the first thing that my mind goes to is what's happening. Why would Jesus have to come again, if we are dying and going straight to heaven, right? What, what, what does the Bible say, right? What does the Bible say? And so this 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, you're going to see it again in the lesson, but let's go ahead and put our finger on it now. Uh, for those of you who've done your lesson, you've done your homework, you get a gold star from Elder Kelly tonight. You are, uh, you, you are the, the teacher's pet. You did your homework. You did your homework and you know that you are going to, you know what this scripture already says and Elder Kelly's flipping and finding, all right? So there are going to be four groups, four groups that will be present at the return of Christ. Four groups, all right? Uh, the righteous dead, the righteous living, the wicked living, and the wicked dead, all right? Four groups will be present at Christ's return. So again, if we're all dying and going to heaven, what is this what what is this scripture talking about and why would it be here if that were the case, right? Let's look at it. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. You're going to hear this one a lot tonight. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. That's the righteous dead. What are they doing? They will rise first. So if they are rising from the dead, if the dead in Christ are rise or having a resurrection here, then that that means that they was they're not in heaven right now, right? That means that mama and papa they 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 not in heaven. They are it sleep in their grave. They are resting in peace. And so I want you to know tonight that this is one of the biggest misnomers in Christendom that when you die, you go to straight to heaven. We're, we're, we're showing you here now in scripture tonight that 
this is not the case. Uh, a righteous, uh, the righteous living, all right? We see the righteous dead. They are rising first. They're rising first. What happens to the righteous living? Look at verse 17. It says, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we're going to meet Christ in the air if you, and I say we, but I mean the living, righteous living, we don't know when the day or the hour that he will return. But if you are alive and you are righteous when he returns, the Bible says that you will be caught up to meet him in the air. All right. What happens to the wicked living? The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. It says, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The wicked living die at the brightness of Christ's coming. This is something that you that, that you don't hear much about. But scripture tells us, scripture tells us that the wicked living will die at the brightness of the of his coming right and so then we see uh the wicked dead what is the the position of the wicked dead the wicked dead the bible says will remain dead until the end of the millennium and so that is a uh, a piece of theology i will have to to share with you in a moment but let's flip to revelations 20 and 5 because i don't want to say i don't want y'all to get off this call tonight i don't want you to click off our facebook channel tonight and say elder kelly did not support that anything he was saying with scripture we want to have a scripture for everything that we're saying tonight and the wicked dead remain dead what are you talking about elder kelly look at the bible it says revelations 20 and 5 but the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished this is the first resurrection so we'll get into that first in just a moment, because I want to show you, uh, talk a little bit about the millennium, the millennium, all right? So what does the Bible say about the dead, right? Christ comes to earth three times in scripture. The first time he comes is to save us from our sin. He comes as a baby in the manger, right? That's the first time that Christ came. He came to live a perfect life before man that he might die as a, uh, as a, a perfect sacrifice for our sin. So the first time he came was to save us from our sin. Uh, he comes a second time to retrieve the righteous. We just read that, right? We just read that when he comes again, we make a, sh a shout with the voice of an archangel. We make a loud voice, right? The, la the last trump, the dead in Christ will rise first and the righteous living will be caught up to meet him in the air, right? So the second time he comes, he's coming to retrieve the righteous. And then there is a 1,000 year period where the righteous will be in heaven with Christ, right? And the dead, the wicked, the wicked living will be dead, right? Because they died at the brightness of his coming, right? So, so the earth will be desolate for a thousand years. The Bible says that G, uh, that Satan will be uh, chained up. That that old serpent will be chained up here on earth. Uh, and 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 some people say, is it a literal chains? Is it a figurative chains? The, the problem is it's going to feel like prison to, to Satan because he's not going to have anybody to torment. You know, the righteous will be uh, in heaven. Uh, uh, the, the dead, the wicked, the wicked living will be dead from the brightness of his coming. And the, uh, the, the wicked dead will still be in the grave. Right. For a thousand years, this is taking place. And then finally, after that thousand years, Christ will come again to the earth a third time. Uh, he'll come up to earth a third time. And that time he will come to judge the wicked. All right. He will come to judge the wicked. And the Bible says that the, the saints of God will be, uh, we will judge men and angels. Right. All right. So uh, we, we'll get to it in a minute. I know, I know I'm throwing a lot of Bible at you, but I got I to gotta throw a lot of Bible at you right now because I got about 30 minutes to, to make this thing make sense, all right? So it says, what is the millennium? The millennium, the millennium is the thousand year reign of Christ with his saints in heaven between the first and second resurrections. It says during this time that the wicked dead will be judged. The earth will be utterly desolate without living human inhabitants, but occupied by Satan and his angels. At its close, Christ with his saints and the holy city will descend from heaven to earth. 
the unrighteous dead will then be resurrected and with Satan and his angels will surround the city, but fire from God will consume them and cleanse the earth of all sin, right? The universe will, will thus be freed of sin and sinners forever, right? And, and, and this, this goes into this idea that hell is an eternal burning, right? A lot that is another misnomer in Christian Christianity that you know a merciful loving God is going to even after the wicked have been judged let them burn for eternity. No, no, no. Hell is all hell is is basically hell and the lake of fire are synonymous. They're one and the same, right? Uh, and when and when Scripture talks about this lake of fire in the book of uh, Revelations chapter 20, when it talks about this lake of fire, when it talks about hell, it's literally talking about uh, them one and the same, that hell is the destruction of the old earth. It's the wiping away of sin from the face of the earth. And we know that there will be a new heaven and a new earth where, uh, where, men, where man will reign with God in eternity forever, right? And there will be no, there will be no sin on this earth. And hell again, is not eternal. It only, it will, uh, hell will end at the, at the, at the end of that destruction of the old earth, right? And when the earth is made new, there's no more need for hell, right? And so there we have it. But, uh, I just wanted to clear that up because that's another popular theory within Christianity is that hell is an eternal burning, right? It says, how can we comfort those who mourn? We can comfort those who mourn with a reminder of God's faithfulness, just reminding them that God is faithful. That that's that that helped that helped me uh, as I mourn with the loss of my brother, as I mourn the loss of my brother, as it, it comforted me to know that God is a faithful God, that His word is true, and if He said it, it is so. And I'm holding on to the promises found in the Scripture that says that uh, He. Uh, is preparing a place for me, and that when he comes again, that I will be with him. I find peace in knowing that my brother is at rest, rest from paying bills and rest from the rat race, rest from the uh, uh, the craziness of this world. He he's at rest from all of this foolishness. He uh, and, and when he comes, when Christ returns, the righteous living will will uh, rise first. And it is my prayer, it is my hope, it is my belief that my brother will be in that number who will raise uh, from the grave and uh, and meet the Father in the air, meet Jesus in the air, amen? And so, and so it says, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. Revelations 21 and four, that is a promise that I can hold on to. That is a promise that I can find comfort in knowing that the God of the universe will take out his sanctified Kleenex, right? And wipe away every tear from my eye on that great day. And there, uh, there will be no more pain, no more sickness, no more death, no more dying. Uh, all the thing, all the former things would have passed away and we will be with our, with God for eternity. All right, and so now that is my spiel, right? That was my springboard into our lesson, into our study, guys. So tonight is now going to be, I see that I have a few people in the uh, in the Zoom room, uh, in our Zoom room tonight, and I want you all to participate with me. And uh, so go ahead and pick your scripture. Go ahead, go ahead and pick your scripture now. So if you look at that number one, you said, Elder Kelly, I'm ready. I already have my finger on Genesis 2 and 7. Uh, you can unmute your mic and share out with us the answer to number one. It says, what two things did God use to make man a living soul? Who has Genesis 2 and 7? Now, if y'all want me to work double time, I can work double time. But you can unmute your mic and share out Genesis 2 and 7. Then the Lord God formed the man out of the dust of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the man became a living being. It says, and the Lord formed God formed dust a man of the dust of the ground and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So here is the equation. Here is the equation, right? We have dust of the ground, right? 
plus the breath of God, and then man becomes a living soul. We are all souls. We are all souls. And, and, uh, and there's another misnomer in Christianity that the soul and the spirit are, 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 two, are, are two things, are the same thing. No, no. A soul, we are a soul. We are the, we are the, the mixture of dust and the breath of life, right? That, those two together make a soul, right? Uh, uh, a, apart from, if a dust without the breath of life is just dust, you know what I mean? Uh, it, it's not a human, right? It's just dust. Uh, uh, you know, breath of life without the dust is just the breath of life. But the two together, that is what becomes a living soul. So what two things that God used, thank you, Pastor Norwood, for sharing out uh, that in filling in our blanks for number seven, that the dust of the ground and the breath of life make a man a soul. All right, uh, let's keep it going. It says, uh, number two, where do all men go at death? Somebody found Ecclesiastes 3 and 20. Ecclesiastes 3, 20. Someone share out what, where do men go at death? All go to the same place. All come from dust and to dust all return. All come, all go to one place. All from the dust and all return to dust. All right. And so again, answering that question, if, you know, if we all go straight to heaven, when we die, then why is Jesus wasting his time coming back? Right? No, when you die, all goes back to that place. That dust returns to where it came from. The dust all are from the dust and return to dust. All right. Uh, and the spirit, the spirit, that breath of life goes back to the father. It says, how much does man know when he is dead? Ecclesiastes 9, 5 and 6. Someone share with me Ecclesiastes 9, 5 and 6. Okay, and it says, for the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished, neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Very clear. Very clear. And so, uh, you know, there is no boogeyman. There is no ghost haunting your house. There is no, you know, you didn't hear from Big Mama and all that stuff. You know, I heard the preacher say, I stop eating so much before you go to bed. You know, you won't hear, you won't have these vivid dreams, right? Of people speaking to you from beyond the grave. That's not happening. There is no one talking to you. The dead know nothing. They can't, but you know, they say, well, you know, uh, I always hear the athletes, man, I know my father was looking down on me. That's how I was able to score, you know, 30 points in this game. Your, your father wasn't, he had nothing to do with that. You've been practicing, you know, right? And so it says now, uh, for the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. And I'll be careful here because uh, although this is truth, the truth hurts. The truth <laughs> hurts, right? Some people may not be able to receive this thought. You know, like I said, I, I had, was teaching the state of the dead to some young people, sent folks home crying. It's hard to accept that uh, this idea. It's, it's I've even heard uh, my pastors and, and Baptist preachers, you know, they always, you know, it's comforting for people to know that their loved ones are with the Lord, even though scripture doesn't support that. And then basically I'm teaching a lie if I teach that, right? Because the scripture is clear that the dead know nothing. Uh, and so let's continue on. Let's continue on. Who has Ecclesiastes 12 and 7? It answers the question, what happens to the breath of life, the spirit at death? What happens to the breath of life, the spirit at death? Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. You don't have your okay. finger. Okay, I have it. Thank you, Sister Bill. <clears throat> it says, and the dust returns to the ground it came from, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Amen, amen. And so we see here, scripture is clear. Again, like I said, that equation, dust of the earth, breath of life equals a living soul. Well, at death, the dust returns to dust, as scripture shows us. 
and the spirit returns to God who gave it. So this is what happens at death. This is what happens at death. Clear, and like I said, the black or the white of the Bible is the only thing that you need uh, to share it with individuals as they seek to know the truth about death. Uh, the next one, who alone has power to call the dead from their resting place? This is found in John 11, 25. John eleven twenty five. 25, the story of Lazarus, the story of Lazarus. So that might make it easy whose name fills this blank in at verse 25. John eleven twenty five. Jesus it's, said, I you. am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the only one who can call uh, the dead from their resting place. Uh, we receive the story of Lazarus. Uh, Lazarus was dead four days uh, before Jesus arrived. At, and he. Uh, some theologians and Bible scholars say that he waited a little bit. To make to 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 make it even more of a miracle, miraculous occurring, that that Jesus, when he came back to Bethany and raised Lazarus from the dead, it showed his authority, his power over life and death. And Jesus said to her, "I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live." And this is a promise that we can comfort those who are mourning that. Hey. If you have lived your life for for God while you have breath in your body, the moment that breath returns to the Father, you are asleep in your grave, you can rest assured, you can rest in peace, knowing that when he returns, you will rise with him. Amen. And so to uh, another, another scripture, our next question, our next question uh, says, when will the dead come out of their grave? When will the dead come out of their grave? Number, question number six. Who has 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 16? Thessalonians is one of those that get kind of lost in there, but you have to be real quick to find 1 Thessalonians. You're going to go... 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 16 says, but, 16 says, Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you, that we who are still alive, who are left at the coming of the Lord, will, cer will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Our question is answered Our in verse 16. When will the dead come out of their graves? When the Lord descends from heaven with a shout, uh, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, the dead in Christ will rise first. And so this is uh, clearly shows us a need for the second coming, right? A need for Christ to return. Our springboard text tonight was John 14, verse 3, that says, if I said I'm preparing a place for you, I'm coming back to receive you unto myself. He's coming back for us. And so it's very clear that uh, when we die, uh, we are resting in peace. We are sleeping uh, in our graves, awaiting this voice, the voice of an archangel, awaiting Jesus with the trump of God to uh, resurrect those who are dead. And it says, our next question, number seven, how many will be resurrected according to the Bible? John 5, 28 and 29. Anybody put their it, finger? Yes, ma'am. says, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto resurrection of life 
and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And so again, we want to highlight, and why did I have, I have resurrection of life bolded, and I have resurrection of condemnation bolded, because remember, there are going to be two resurrections, right? There's going to be the resurrection of the righteous dead, and that is the resurrection of life mentioned in the first part of verse 29, right? When Jesus comes back uh, with a loud, with a shout of, of the archangel, with the trump of God, and he makes that, he blows his horn, and the dead in Christ rise first, right? Those, that's the resurrection of life. Now, remember, we said that the righteous uh, living and the righteous dead who are taken to heaven with Christ at the second coming will reign for a thousand years with him. And it, the Bible is clear. And I'll read it for you now because I don't want you to be confused. Elder Kelly, there, this ain't in the lesson. What are you talking about? Revelations chapter 20, it, 20, verse 4 and 5 is a good one to keep in your mental Rolodex, right? And it says... And I saw thrones that sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the mark of his of the have not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark or their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and, and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And so we see in verse four, the latter part of verse, no, the uh, beginning of verse five, it says, but the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. And so uh, you see this millennial period, this millennium period where the righteous living and the righteous dead are reigning with Christ in heaven. And then uh, after that thousand years is up, the resurrection of the uh, wicked or the condemned uh, will take place. All right. So I wanted to make clear, but all who are in the grave will be resurrected according to John 5, 28 and 29. What does Paul say will happen to the righteous dead at Christ's second coming? What happens to the righteous dead at Christ's second coming? Let's see. That is question number eight. Uh, and I said we would hear it several times tonight. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17. If you have it, uh, you can read out. If not, I can get there right now. Let's see here. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 says, for the Lord himself will descend from the heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. So what does Paul say will happen to the righteous dead at Christ's second coming? The dead in Christ will rise first. The dead in Christ will rise first. That's what happens with the righteous dead. It says, uh, the next question, the next question, question number nine how will all of the righteous be chained, changed at the coming of Christ? Does anyone have their finger on 1 Corinthians 15? 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 54. If not, I'm there. It says, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all, all, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trump will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. How will all of the righteous be changed at the coming of Christ? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, before you, as fast as you can blink, we're going to be changed. We're going to put off this mortal body and put on immortality, and we will uh, have victory over death because the Bible says that we will live with him forever. All right. 
uh, who alone will have the privilege of everlasting life? John 3.16 gives us the answer to this question. Who alone will have the privilege of everlasting life? John 3.16 is clear. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. On, on last Sabbath, we talked about how important faith is. Whoever believes in him, whoever believes in Jesus Christ uh, should not perish, but have everlasting life. So anyone, whosoever will, you can any that you can just leave it blank, whoever you can fill their name in the blank, though that individual that trusts God for salvation will have everlasting life. Will have everlasting life. Our last question, our very last question, what does the Bible say about the possibility of the dead praising the Lord? Psalm 115 verse 17 Psalm 115 verse 17 says, the dead do not praise the Lord, nor any who go down into silence. This is just another reminder that when you dead, you are dead. <laughs> the Bible is clear. I hate to say it like, but when you're dead, you're dead. There's, there's no, there's no, there's not all this spiritualism and calling folks back and going beyond, hey, don't don't get uh, caught up in all that foolishness, right? It, the, the Bible is clear. The dead are dead. As much as we miss them, as much as we love them, uh, once they are dead, they are dead. And, and, and I feel just tonight, I want to encourage you to know that when life is over, you can rest in peace knowing that your soul is uh, at, at peace, your soul is dead. Your soul, the, your, the body, the dust has returned to dust. The spirit has returned to God. You are at rest, uh, and you can be at peace in this life, knowing that when you die, the Lord is going to be faithful to His promise to return and bring us unto Himself. As our springboard text reminded us, that if I go to prepare a place for you, I will return to. Uh, return to bring you to, uh, to bring you with me, right? That's uh, as paraphrase to bring you with me. And so God, Jesus Christ is coming back for us. And so death, what happens to man after death? He's at rest. He's at rest. He is sleeping in his grave until the until Christ parts the sky. And so tonight, uh, we are encouraging you. If you are studying with, if you are studying along with us uh, this week, uh, maybe you started on Sabbath and you're excited about this lesson study. We appreciate you. We ex we're excited with you, and we pray that you will study with us each night, uh, March 11th through March 25th. Uh, tonight again, we uh, will be back here on this Zoom channel at 7.30 on Wednesday night. We will also be in the building uh, for you to study along with us. We are excited to uh, learn together, to study together, to sharpen our skills. Uh, and if you want to, please pass these books along to your friends, to your relatives, to your neighbors. Uh, pass them along because this will be an opportunity for us to engage individuals about what it is that we believe. And so uh, please share with with your friends, your family, your neighbor, invite them to study with us. Invite them to uh, go a little deeper in the word of God, answering some of these uh, Bible questions that a lot of us may not even have ever seen scripture to support. And so again, why are we doing this? It's so that we know what we believe, we know why we believe it, and we know where we can find it in scripture. And so uh, I pray that you have been encouraged. I pray that you uh, have taken away tonight a way that you can comfort individuals who are mourning, a way that you can comfort those who uh, have lost a loved one is to remind them that God is faithful, that he's all knowing, that he has a plan for all of this, even after death. And so uh, we can be at peace knowing that God has a plan for us. And if we trust in him, if we put our faith in him, then he will keep his promise to come again. Uh, well, that is my time here.
if there are any prayer requests and you're in the, you can put them in the chat because we do not want to leave uh, this time tonight without praying uh, for you and I'll pray on your behalf. Uh, I am looking in the chat now. I'm opening up the chat to make sure that I'm not uh, overlooking anyone who may have put a prayer request in. We want to lift up those who came down front on Sabbath uh, to pray uh, on and to stand in the gap for their loved ones. Uh, they are studying with us and we're just going to wave to them and say uh, hello and, and God bless you. We thank you for studying with us. Uh, share the word with your friends. Share the uh, flyers and the times with your friends. Let them know that every uh night this week, not every night this week, but Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, uh, and Sabbath, you can study with us. You can go a little deeper in the word of God with your Berean family as we seek to share God's love in a way that definitely makes you happier. Uh, Wednesday night prayer and healing service after prayer uh, prayer study. And so we're excited about that to pray, uh, come and be uh, blessed and anointed. And we are going to pray over you uh, in that prayer and healing service. And so we're excited about all the things that God is doing. And so uh, thank you uh, for that reminder that we will have a prayer, uh, a prayer service, a prayer and healing service after our study on Wednesday night. Again, the time to meet, be there in the building is 7.30 uh, uh, because we are going to give time for those who are traveling through uh, that Houston traffic. But if there be nothing else, let us go to the Lord in prayer to seal what we've learned tonight in our hearts. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you, thank you, thank you that you have allowed us to study again, God, to open your word and to find truth, God. Uh, we understand that some, the truth can be uncomfortable. Uh, the truth can be upsetting. But God, uh, in the end, the truth is the truth. And Lord, we pray that you help us to accept it. Help us to uh, divorce or to break away from these uh uh, the, these traditions, God, and these, uh, and, and to living our life based off uh, of, uh, of things, God, alternative facts, God, things that are not found in scripture. And so, Lord, if we have a desire to live for you, to be uh, those who are set apart, God, we pray that we respond to your word tonight and to comfort one another with the, with the, with the fact that that you are a God who cannot lie, that if you promise that you come back for us, God, that you're preparing a place for us and you will receive us unto yourself. And so God, we cannot wait for the day to see your face, uh, Lord, to hear you part the sky. And we pray, God, that we will be prepared, that we will be ready to meet you in the air. God, we thank you. We love you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And just a reminder, there will not be any uh, refreshments on Wednesday night. So uh, we pray that uh, you keep that in mind. We pray that you pack your crackers on Wednesday <laughs> so that you can uh, make it through our study that evening. Uh, we pray that all is, uh, that you will be, uh, we pray that you'll be, you are blessed tonight and that you will invite a friend to study with us uh, like, share our posts here on our Facebook page that someone else may come to know the truth about what happens after we die. Thank you all and God bless you. Have a great night again. We will see you on, on Wednesday night at 7.30 for lesson 18 in our study.